So I, I want to tell you the bad news I have for you about, about what we were talking about. Uh, so CBS uh, Radford is what it's called. I live on Radford. Okay. So CBS is literally a three minute drive for me. It's, it's, I live on the other side of Radford. So here's the deal. So they are tearing it down and I believe they're turning it into condos or uh, apartment complexes or something. Yeah, it's going away. So that big brother house is probably going to just move locations, but it's not going to be where it is right now. I'm sorry, man. I I wanted to tell you that, but I. So they're gonna have to relocate. You know, I just I I, I do want to say this. If you think that it does not annoy mm. me that I watch mm. reality television, you're wrong. It, it it annoys the shit out of me. However, I bet you any money, any okay. money. Not any money. I okay. bet you. I don't have a. I don't have a, a monetary amount, because if, if 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 I mean if you win, then I'm you know. Let's say thirteen million. Thirteen million what? Well, Canadian uh, euro. Oh, Canadian dollars. Thirteen million Canadian dollars works out to about eleven dollars American. So that's uh, that's, okay. That's, that's perfect. Let's go okay. with that. I bet you if you watched Below Deck from I, start to finish, hmm, you're about to, from start to finish, okay. you would mm -hmm. love it. What the fuck is Below Deck? Below Deck explores the lives of yachties. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, you will. No, here's the thing, Wayne. I'm an actor. Okay? I am... Mm -hmm. I am scripted. I like. I like. I like when I get on stage. When stage, but when you, <laughs> you're gonna do that. When 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 you say reality TV, you know what reality t TV did for a lot of actors out there. It took away the studios' want to do scripted shows. So then they got these these fucking people to come on these quote unquote reality shows, and we know they're all produced. You know what I mean? So it, they, the studios went with that because it was. A thousand times cheaper. They got these people to come on. They didn't have to pay them anything, and they were raking in the money. That's how reality TV kind of came into, uh, you know. And I blame Paris Hilton because she fucking, you know. Listen, we're trying to get a docu series. Well, docu series is different. Docu series is not reality TV. Docu series is, you know, two people going out there and trying to teach the world a few things about, you know, about just whatever. But Some reality TV, reality is TV different. is very different. Docu series is is respectable. Oh, I life. yeah, like I see what you're saying. I see yeah. what you're saying. It's um, trash TV, dude. It's just trash TV. Yeah. That's my opinion. This is all my opinion. Do you want to know what the oldest? Do you want to know what the oldest reality show on television is? And you might actually respect this a bit. I probably know what you're going to say, but say it. What? What am I going to say? You know, I don't want to guess because I'm probably, I might be wrong. So why don't you just say it and then I'll no, say it. No, why don't you yes. just try to finish my sentences? That's cool. I could look hey, at it like a Hey, how about this? How, I'm not getting mad. I want you to take a shot. No, at well, it. how about this? I'm not, I'm not mad either. But what I am saying is I'll take a shot at it. You ready? What is Here, that hang sound? on. Let's, let's let Shandell finish vacuuming the house while I try to make a podcast. She's vacuumed for an hour and a half. Is that, that a kid, vacuum? It's yeah, loud. we're going to. Shandell! <laughs> Cohabitation, ladies and gentlemen. Co like what the you know? Like, listen, it's it's it's. I don't have a soundproof studio down here. <laughs> Sorry, hilarious. just a five-letter word. <laughs> cops. So, what were we talking about? Cops. I can't remember. Cops is the oldest reality show. Oh, cops! Yeah, bad boys, bad boys. Bad boys. What they gonna what do? Gonna do? What, you gonna what they gonna do you? when they went? They, what? Yeah, this come is, for I, you. We would be cool cops. Like I, I could see us. This is how it would play out in my mind. This is how yeah. I've laid in bed at night, awake, thinking okay. about how you and I would be cops. First of yeah. all, 
first of cops. all. Yeah. I think that you and I would be cops in like a big city, but not LA. Yes. I don't think we're LAPDers. No, maybe New York. I don't uh, know. Chicago. Yeah. Maybe Chicago. Chicago. Something. I could see us okay. in Chicago. Even Baltimore for some reason. I just Baltimore's uh I'd I'd rather be in Chicago if we're gonna okay. choose like So we're Chicago cops. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Chicago we're, PD. Yeah. We're Chicago PD. And but we you got on you got on because you're a bit older. You you got on right you away at twenty something. You you no, you're a up. bit older. No, but you're more experienced. So you were my coach officer because they have coach officers. Don't you go through the academy and then you and then you get put with a senior guy and he's usually like a little bit bitter and twisted, but he still loves his job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, but he's a yeah, little old yeah. school, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then one day you look we're in the car, you know, and you look and you'd be like, I think we need to go. I think we need to go to like the detective side or something. Yeah. I could see us as detectives. I could see us. Yeah, as here's detectives. here's my vision of us being cops in Chicago. So it's good cop, bad cop, right? Of course, there are or that, that good tandem. Cop, good cop, bad cop, bad cop. Well, how about this? Good cop and then bad cop. That's really funny. Okay, so you're the good cop. So basically, we pull someone over or we're you know arresting someone. You'd be whispering in their ear. Life can be hard sometimes, so we just have to be ourselves, and everyone should just admit that we're all just. Did human you just beings. say that you, I'm not the funny one? I'm the good cop. Yeah, you're the good cop. So I'm the bad cop. I come up and I go like this: "Hey, motherfuckers, on the ground, spread your fucking legs." Ah, oh, I see you're not wearing any underwear. What the hell, man? So something you know, real funny like that. And my brain just kind of stopped, and I didn't know where I was going with the whole thing. Your brain but should have I'm... stopped two sentences before you said. Well, first of all, I'm I'm fucking funny. Well, you are you are funny, but you know at p- other people's expense. Do you know what I mean? Like when you get on when Which... you get on in the morning and you get on TikTok and you're like, that doesn't morning, define answers. me. Listen to me. I want to tell you something. When you get on TikTok in the morning and you're like, "Good morning, assholes," <laughs> you know, sometimes. Pancakes are just like people. They they sit there on a plate and they look up and they're like, pour more syrup on me. I get it. I love you all. Like when you do that, it's like I feel your heart pouring out into a world that is filled with different kinds of people. What are you going to do today? I'm going to spend the next 10 minutes trying to figure out what the fuck you just said. <laughs> I think you me need t- to chug that too. smart water. I think you need me to too. chug that smart water. <laughs> what the? Mm. You know what? Yeah, man. Huh. Oh, man, first of all, nothing. it's a lot earlier here than it is there. So yeah, you what have time to forgive is it? me. 10, 9, 8, 44 in the morning, man. It's 8, 44 in the morning here. And, it's you know, almost noon. Oh man, you guys have it. You guys have it so much better because you're so much later than us. It's the same fucking thing. It kind of is, though, right? I mean, when you look at it, it's like no, it is. It's, it, no, it's exactly the same. In thing. a way, it's not like it could be like, oh, Alex, your eleven forty four is gonna be crazy. <laughs> you're gonna be hanging out with a guy that 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 just. I don't even hang on. I just want to figure out what you just. Yeah, go said. for it. Go for it. We were talking about cops, yeah. and I just want to let you know, first of uh-huh. all, if I was a detective with the Chicago PD, yeah. I'd be the cop one. Mm-hmm. Okay, first, let's, let's, be, let's be real. I don't have, how do I put this? If I was a cop, mm-hmm. I would be in the sergeant's office all the time, and he would be like, Hannah, because that's my last name, and they use last names. That's my daughter's first name. Okay, Wayne, uh-huh. mm-hmm. Officer Hannah. Okay. Um, this is the third time this month you've been caught masturbating in your car on night shift. And then I would be like, I don't know what to tell you. I, I get, when I get bored, I get touchy. And your response dog. to the captain would be like, the Who's squeaky the wheel gets the grease. Mm, it puts the lotion on its skin. So I have a I have a buddy who's a cop, and uh, yeah. he 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 was telling me a story once because he always makes fun of me because firefighters and cops we have this little back and forth, and it's all in good fun. Um, basically, mm-hmm. what it boils down to is that 
Um, they wish they made different choices and came to the red truck side. However, wow, wow. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I do support our boys in blue and ladies in blue, and uh, mm-hmm. and and I think that it takes a a uh, a wonderful soul to do that job properly. Um, what I will say is this: He had told me when he he worked with this one guy who was like a senior officer, his training officer. He taught him how to do every call without getting out of his car. So he would like pull people over. Wow. It's Canada, right? So it's different. Yeah, I guess yeah, he'd yeah. pull people over and he'd be like waving them over and they'd come up and he'd write them a ticket. <laughs> Wait, in the car? Yeah, he yeah. He, in the car? They wouldn't get out of their cruiser. He taught, he's like, that was the game they played was that they wouldn't get out of their cruiser. They'd make wow. everybody come to them. Yeah. Do you in know this- something? If you're in America and you get, if you get pulled over and start to get out of your car, they'll fucking shoot you. Like you can't oh, leave yeah. your Oh car. yeah, you can't mess around. I don't think no, they'll no, no, sh- no. they won't shoot you in every they, not every it'll scenario. be like 50% it'll be, of the it'll time. Be... <laughs> well, we're not going there. Listen, uh, uh, I will tell you a story and it goes back to our reality series thing. Cops. So in Canada we had our own version of cops called to protect and to serve. And it followed yeah. the RCMP, the Royal Canadian. Excuse me, Mounted Police, and then it followed the Edmonton City Police, the Calgary Police, like these big city police departments. And I was, wa- I loved cops, and I was watching cops one night, and it, they were like, they had like, they rolled up in these big armor trucks, and they're all wearing like SWAT gear, and they're like, police department search warrant, and they break down the door, and they, everybody's on their face, and they're arresting, and they're searching their house, and they find all these illegal weapons. And they seize okay. the weapons, they arrest the guys, and they leave. Fast forward a year, and I'm watching to protect and to serve on a Sunday night, let's say, the Canadian version. And it, it shows these two RCMP officers walk up to this door, give it a knock, pop, pop, pop. Guy answers, they're like, hi, uh, Mr. Mr. Martin? He's like, yes. He's like, listen, we have a search warrant here to search your house for illegal weapons. He's like, oh, well, come on in. So they go in, <laughs> and he's like, just so you know, there's some automatic rifles under my bed, and there's this, and there's that. And they grab them all, and they arrest him, and he's handcuffed. And I swear, I, you can't even make this up. He looks at them, and he goes, how long am I going to jail for? And the cop goes, well, Mr. Martin or whatever, um, it's whatever day and you won't see the judge until your bail hearing on monday or tuesday so you'll be here for a couple of days he's like oh well is it possible if you f- like put a big bowl of food for my cats out and there's the cop filling up the big bowl of cat food <laughs> setting it up and making sure there was water and then they took him away like there's a big difference in how our countries do business <laughs> when it comes to police <laughs> to, to well police i think work. with everything right i mean with yeah. everything there's yeah. a big difference. I mean, you guys out there in Canada, you guys got taken care of, as far as I know, during the pandemic, right? I mean, you guys got taken care of. What do you mean? Out here, well, I mean, you guys you guys didn't have to fight for your, you know, for your, uh, you know, like, you know, pandemic unemployment, stuff like that. You guys got pretty taken care of. Yeah, right? but I, I mean, mean, it backfired. It backfired, too, because now employers are having a hard time getting people to come back to work because they were making so much money with CERB, we called it. Well, same thing here, man. But our homeless count went up tenfold during the pandemic because certain people couldn't even get their money. I mean, especially here in California. Yeah. I mean, there were there were like over a million people waiting for unemployment that never came. And they're all out on the streets now, man. And they're still out there. They still haven't gotten the money. They put meth addicts in an arena here and they would have let the dealers come because they needed, they didn't have place beds for them in, in shelters and stuff. So they put them in an arena and they would have the, they, they would help them with methadone or whatever. Yeah. It's a, it's a different world. So you so your meth addicts get an arena. Ours get like a coupon to fucking, you know, wiener schnitzel and a sidewalk to sleep on. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's There's a big difference. I know, but you know what the funny thing is, is that, there's still, man, like our protests are 20 people. Are, I, I feel like the protests are getting smaller. And and I like to see that. I don't I don't understand yeah. it. I've never understood that stuff. I don't understand going against the grain for the sake of going against the grain. You know, Unless like there's I, something to really, really go against the grain for. Okay, so, okay, so our uh, federal government just uh, filed a lawsuit against the state I of Texas. Heard, I oh, heard. Oh, my God, I'm so happy about that, I, man. I am, too. I am, too. Yeah. Um, 
humanity shouldn't be. I, I hate, though, I brought this. I was saying this to Shandell last night because I read about it in the news. And I said, um, I don't agree, however, with the statement that he made, the one guy that announced it, he said that they've found Our that attorney it is, general. your attorney general, he yeah. said, we have found that it is unconstitutional. And I, you got to let me finish. Yeah, go ahead. I, uh, I don't like that. I don't agree with that. I do not think it's unconstitutional. I don't think that you're allowed to use that word. This is as bad to me as the Holocaust was to take away a human's basic rights Mm -hmm. is is not unconstitutional it's a travesty it is it is it is it is absolutely horrendous despicable horrible like it's all of those things yeah i agree 100 percent. yeah and it's not just unconstitutional it's inhumanitarian i mean it's it's unhumanitarian it's it goes against humanity i mean it goes against it's just it's just horrible and and what i was hearing is that these these girls in texas who were you know wanted to get the abortion after the law was passed they're going into mexico you know for these cheaper kind of uh, you know things and it's like a lot of people are going to get sick a lot of people are going to there's going to be a lot of suicides it's gonna be, anyway there's going to be a lot of it's not great it's not great so i'm glad that uh, that our government filed a lawsuit because now I don't know what's going to happen with that. I don't know if it's going to go anywhere. I mean, I'm I'm still waiting for you know Trump to go to prison, you know, for all his mm-hmm. crimes against humanity. But you know, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. I keep coming back to this uh, pineapple on pizza though. That tracksuits. No, not even that. Like I can get past that, oh. uh, kind of. But it's you better you better get onto it, buddy. Because if we're going to be friends and we're going to actually work together. Yeah. On a, on a, like a, this is what I'm going to wear. This kind of stuff is what I'm going to wear while we do that stuff. Well, if you do that, I'm going to have a wardrobe myself, which won't be much. Oh, okay. I support you. Um, I tried to say this before, Alex. I said that this, this is all coming out because this is my true authentic self. This is who I am authentically (sighs) fashion wise. Jesus Christ. Okay. That's fine. I'm going to have to get over it. I'm going to have to get over it. Well, I wasn't even going to bring up the tracksuits. You brought up the fucking tracksuits, Wayne. I'm bringing up pineapple on pizza. I'm more hurt. Which is also amazing. I'm hurt. I'm from Jersey. You don't. You're not Italian, though. No, I am not, but I grew up. That's all I. I might as well be. I'm from Jersey. I'm from New Jersey. Yeah. So, therefore, yeah, pineapple? they put pineapple on pizza in New Jersey, you too, Alex. You gotta fucking Alex. beg for it, though. You gotta fucking beg for it. They're not gonna fucking just do it. What is it about pineapple? I get the sweet, salty thing. I get the salt, like, you know, uh, salty and sweet is a good thing. Is that what it is? I, I love. Do you, do, do you want me to be true with you? Do you want me to? Yeah, get, I do. Like, I do want to know why. Yeah, raw. Everyone want wants you to be raw. raw. Yeah. <sighs> Have you ever had? You like spice? You like heat? Love it. Pineapple, jalapeno, or a hot pepper, mm. and like a pepperoni on a pizza, and then you will see. Then you will see. Okay. I, I don't might know. Have to try this. I might have to try this because I don't. I, you know, I, it was it was somebody from. Um, it was somebody from San Diego originally that put me onto that combination. Of course it was fucking San Diego. Yeah. She's pretty cool though. She's in the Coast Guard and stuff. Um, oh, wow. but I'm telling you, I get it. I get the whole stigma behind yeah. pineapple on pizza, but Hey, mm-hmm. I'm also on antidepressants. So, <laughs> so am I, wait, yeah. you both are. Look, by the way, I just want everyone to know that your hosts Wayne Hanna and Alex Scooby are both on antidepressants. That's oh, why we're so yeah. fun. That's why mm-hmm. we, we have so much love in our hearts. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, this I was just about to say something. I can't. Oh, my God. Uh, you're oh, wearing like a it. dress shirt from 1991. Open. This is my I, summer shirt, man. I swear to fuck, Alex. You might be one of the coolest and raddest human beings I have ever met. I love you. I love you. We fucking love each other, man. We're in love. Yeah, you can't get around it. People can't say that we're not. I mean, they're not going to say that, right? They better not. Because <laughs> I'll fucking... I'll fucking wrath of fucking con all over their face. I, mean, you know, I don't know what that means. But And I don't even want to know... Why all over there? What did you do last night? I need to know. Okay, so I watched a... Oh, I wanted to say this. I wanted to say this. Okay, so I watched a fucking horror movie... 
that, you know, you pick these horror movies, sometimes they suck, sometimes you get a, a gem. This movie was done so well. It's a Spanish uh, flick. It's called... You watched it again? It's so good, dude. It's called... Th I know, but we talked about it the last episode. No, we didn't, did we? No, 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 no. This is a new... I watched it the other day. So, no, we haven't done a podcast in like four days. No, I just watched this. It's called 32 Malasana Street. You just told me about I told this you the on other the phone. day. We, I didn't tell you on a podcast. No, you told me on a podcast. You did the last episode. We talked about it. And we talked about I how... I just watched it. Uh, I just watched it, Wayne. You and I are now not, not yesterday. <laughs> we are, but I'm telling right, you, if, and I want okay, to go back okay, to the Here's archive. the thing. Just if I case, have talked... I don't think... I, I, okay, so he, Tyler can edit this oh, out. Passionate. Tyler can edit this out, but I, I really just watched it. So I can't imagine... The, anyway, so... I can't wait. To okay, I hope uh, you know what I hope you are because that'll just show you that my dementia has fucking kicked in. But so, don't thirty two Malasana Street. If you haven't seen it, it's it's in subtitles. It's 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 shot. The cinematography is gorgeous. The actors are incredible. Watch this movie, and it is scary. It's, it'll get you. It's really good. It's really good. No, I just did a TikTok about this the other day, and people yesterday, and people were like, "What were you watching?" And I had to tell them I didn't talk about this on the last podcast. You did. Wayne, you Wayne, so your did. fucking your antidepressants are fucking killing your brain right now. And I they are <laughs> So So I'm trying to figure out because I am on I am I did start Zoloft, mm -hmm. which is the drug that um my doctor put on. The way he the way he described it was creepy. He goes, Wayne, you have a lot of anxiety with a touch of D. Touch of dick. I get it. And I was like, I don't, I've never had a touch of D. Uh, uh, he goes, depression, oh, Wayne. Oh, depression. Oh, he I goes, thought he was depression. talking about dick. Yeah, depression. Okay. Speaking of which, no, I can't say that. Okay. Why? We can say whatever we want. This is our fucking well, podcast. Can, no, I know we can, but it, it, it's, it's about, well. How so, are your boners, by the way? Are you getting it up? On the, on the. Uh... I, now that I think of it, I haven't had an, oh, no, I had one this when I woke up. You had an morning. erection? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I had an erection. Yeah, I had an erection long. last night. Uh, yeah, no. I, some people, when they get on antidepressants, they can't get a bone. Uh, they can't get it up. So, but that's good that you are. Yeah, you, but we cry less. We cry less, which is good. Like you don't want to walk around crying all the time, Wayne. I don't want to walk around with a boner all the time. I'd rather either, walk Alex. around with a big stiffy than a fucking than a tear in my eye. I used to. I in high school, I had this buddy. I'm not going to say his name, Dave, um, and he. <laughs> He was, he's always been unapologetically himself and he'd wear, wear these track pads. He'd be in the middle of class and he'd get a, a boater. He'd like stand up and be like, Hey, look, everybody, I've got a boater. He'd be sticking out so of his sweatpants. Of and nobody, you did that now? Oh, you'd be, you you'd did be that in prison. now? You'd be in prison. Yeah, you can't. Well, I mean, as a grown ass man, you should never do that. It's funny when you're a, when you're a kid in class, but yeah. Well, you oh, shouldn't yeah. be a grown ass man looking at a kid with a boner because that's not good either. No, I was also no. Huh. That was weird. I don't know what just happened. That was. I don't have a boner right now, my Wayne. Knee is, my knee is twitching. Oh boy, you know what that means. I'm dehydrated. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Because we're up on health and nutrition and fitness. Hey man, so I was in my fitness. I was in my car. Um, I was in my car yesterday, and I was listening to this song. Do you remember the song from the eighties? It was called Naughty Naughty. It goes doo, 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 naughty naughty, uh, na, 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 loud and bold. T -t 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 Tease me. You know that song? Ba -na -na -na, nope. Take it easy. Na -na -na -na, hug and squeeze me. I'm a naughty naughty. You know that song? Oh my God, I haven't heard it in decades and I, I heard it yesterday and I was literally like, oh my God, I forgot about this fucking song. It was amazing. Anyway, I'm drinking coffee over here. On my left hand, I got coffee and in my right hand, I have water and I'm double fisting. By the way, speaking of double fisting, I haven't had a drink in six days, a, a booze in six days. Cheers, my friend. Six days, no booze. Oh, and that leads me to this. When we were talking about pineapple on pizza, this is what I wanted to bring up, but you kept interrupting me, is, um, so so here's something interesting. When I was a bartender, uh, waiter, bartender in Chicago, I was closing down the bar one day, and I was having a Corona, you know, beer. 
closing time. One last open the doors all the doors and let you out Why do you fucking? I let world. you sing. I let you. Ass- we're harmonizing. I, let you sing an entire I thought we were gonna song. fucking no, harmonize. We you were cutting me off. Fucking, this is what antidepressants does in the first couple of days, ladies and gentlemen. It makes you absolutely insufferable. I just wanted to sing, sing. the verse. I'm not going to talk until you sing. I want to know. It's well. How how do you sing? How do you sing? How do you sing when you're angry inside? You don't. You just carry on and you move on. And hopefully a song will come out later on in the podcast that I could just get out and show the world because you've shown them probably four or five times now that you have quite the angelic voice. And I, I just want to let people know too that I also have a voice that of an angel. I th- Close in time. <laughs> See? One last call for alcohol, so finish your, finish your whiskey your beer. and beer. Uh, uh, uh. Closing time. You don't have to go home, Open but you off. can't stay. You can't stay here. here. I know oh, yeah. who I want to take I me home. To take me me home. How did you? Oh, here's a good one. How did you? How how did you go about? Let me tell you a story. I was just how about to tell you, you a story. First, I want to. This all got fucked up. No, I was uh, okay, I was having a corona in then... Chicago, closing down the bar, and uh, our my here we go again. My 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 good friend Herman came up to me and said he was the bar back that night, and he goes, "Why are you drinking that?" without uh, Tabasco. And I go, what the hell are you talking about? He goes, put a little Tabasco in the Corona. And I'm like, are you fucking with me? He goes, no, do it. So I'm like, fuck it, I'll try it. I put three drops of Tabasco in the Corona bottle. I've never had a Corona without it since. And that was like fucking six decades ago, it feels like. See, I don't like Tabasco, but I'll in, try in the Corona, It actually tastes like, kind of like uh, what like a taco would taste like with hot sauce. It's amazing. It's phenomenal. So people... Little little Tabasco, if you like spice in your Corona, I swear to God. Go ahead. So for our Canadian listeners, mm-hmm. I'm about to teach Alex, who has never been to Canada, something that he should try. I will try the Tabasco and Corona mm-hmm. thing if you try this. Tomato juice and beer. Motherfucker. Yeah, it's called, we, call it a, we call it a poor man's bloody uh, red or, eye. or red eye. We call it a yeah. red eye. I drank mm-hmm. that for years. Mm-hmm. A little salt on top. Pop, 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 pop. That's so good. Love yeah. it. Okay. Wow. Yeah. We- Do you want to sing the rest of my fucking songs? One last call for alcohol. So finish your whiskey, your beer. What's up, man? And beer. And beer. Oh, you're going to correct me because or my beer. voice is of an angel. And now you feel like you got to correct oh me. Oh, my God. You... You do have a voice, and if I I feel like you and I, if we were to walk into like your uh, local um, pub, mm-hmm. excuse excuse you, me, oh you can um, hear that? I know you can hear that. Yeah, we would we would sing we would sing uh, we would sing karaoke together. I think you and I should sing together. <laughs> How about that? And maybe not with your pants on. <laughs> Hey, man, this is fun, man. We're just sitting here. How fucking nice is this track? I love the fucking tiger faces all over it. When you when you have that... When I walk with a tracksuit, my hand's out. I got like a swagger walk. Like, I fucking feel like I own the world. I just fucking feel superior. Wayne. Like, I feel like... When I wear this tracksuit, let me tell you this. When I wear this tracksuit, when I wear this tracksuit, I feel like you owe me something. And we could talk about the terms. You know what? In my, I, like I, I owe wearing, most people I, things. So, go ahead. I had a bill collector call me yesterday. Not great. This is a lie. Actually, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't have a bill co- collector call me. But if I did, if I had a bill collector call me and I was wearing a tracksuit, it would end with them being like, "So can we just? We'll just pay you?" Because I fucking feel I've never felt so alive. Like I just want to, I just want to yell for things right now. Like I want Shandell to come and fucking feed me grapes from the vine. You know why you walk with swagger, me, Wayne? Watch, watch. You know why you walk with swagger? Because I, because you're, because I have to poop. That's exactly why, and you have to get there quick. And anyone who has to poop quick walks with swagger, clinching their butt cheeks, all fucked up. Oh Maybe have God. the chills. Like ever get the chills when you have to shit the real bad. First couple of days, yeah. The first couple days on that new um, on Zoloft, 
I had. Do you guys call it scooter bum down there? The scoots. Uh, what is? What are you referring to? Be, before I say yes or no. <gasps> oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, like when you're when you're scooting because it's 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 not it's not to, you can't trust the fart. I well at my age I don't trust any farts. I, I'll do it. I'll fart, but that's you know I feel bad for anyone around me if it's not. It's like sh- Russian roulette. Yeah, Russian roulette. Did you see how white my chest hair is? Look at that. I do. Holy shit, man! How did you pick up women in the bar? I have one uh, white chest. I don't hair. do that. I have one I right don't now. Pick up, I've, no, when you no, did no, no. back in you the day, something, Wayne, when, you just asked me something that is hilarious because if you knew me, I never was the one to go hit on a woman ever. Like I can't do it. It makes me. Re- yeah. So they would have to come to me and like show interest before I would even go. Well, what, where, where, where are you from? You know the, the bullshit because I am not that guy. And and I actually, when I was around guys, because some of my friends were like that, I was kind of like sick of. I was like, why would you, why are you being such a fucking like? Let, if they if they're interested, they'll come up. You know, I mean, like I never hit on on women ever. I I can't. I I have zero um, skills Game? when it comes to. I would I would walk around. I would just keep doing the lap in the bar, and then you would like <laughs> find the girl. You'd make eye contact, but then I yeah. would just keep doing the lap and doing the lap, and then. One o'clock in the morning would come and still nothing, and then I go home alone with a. Well, I would always get a pita or a what? burrito. I, I would always go. Oh, so good! Like that. Oh, I would wake up in the morning. I would wake up in the morning with like this half with like a black olive and some mayonnaise on my chest. Dude, I've over. done that so many times. I would ah. look over and I would see like I would look at it the same way I would look at if I ever was successful and took a girl home not that that's that's what success is rated on but if a girl took me home or whatever it was i would wake up i'd look over and i'd just see this half-eaten burrito (laughs) and i'd smile (laughs) and then sometimes i'd be like i'll take a little morning bite and be like fuck yeah last night rocked (laughs) oh yeah well here's here's my here's i want to say something right now we're just talking about picking up women and all that stuff and uh, my (laughs) I am such a monogamous person and romantic, meaning that when I get into a relationship, I want it to be, you know, I just want it to last. I just, I don't, I don't like dating. I never did. I never liked the dating game. I've never liked being, you know, promiscuous, although, although in my past I have been, but I don't like that. So my problem is I'm the kind of guy that would go to like, Back in the day, like a strip club, and and the girl would come up and say, "You want lap dance?" And I go, "You know, I don't, but I do want to know why. Why do you do this to yourself? Like, I just want to know, like, what? I mean, what's your dreams? What's your goals?" And they'd look at me and go, "Oh, fuck off!" You know what I mean? Like, I'm that yeah. dick. However, and I'm gonna bring this up, and and I think we're about to. This is where we kind of do our thing. This is where we talk about the real shit for a second. Okay. Um, it's all real, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. It's all real. No, it is all real. But yeah. this is where see, Alex has this ability with me to bring shit. Like the, we have this ability where we can we can get into some good conversations about some things that are important. Mm-hmm. And my biggest problem, and I'm actually gonna ask you for advice, is I'm the opposite. I inside I would love I would love a relationship like your relationship with your wife. Mm-hmm. I look at you guys and I don't know you guys super well yet but from talking to you and talking to her a bit um you guys are in love, you're soulmates. Yes, and, I believe and, that. And you're quite con- you you're quite like you're happy with that. And I've always said I would love to, I can't wait till I'm in a place where um I just know 25 years from now, it's going to still be that same person in my world. Gotcha. And I f- fucking struggle because of my abandonment issues and the other. I struggle with that. Like, I'm always in my head. And that's actually why I went on Zoloft um, was because I have severe anxiety when it comes to relationships. And I want to get to a place where I don't and I can work through it and get into a routine with Shandell. And we can both live in bliss because she is an absolutely phenomenal woman dating a fucking moron you know what i mean so Hmm. i like i like that you have you have that mentality because i very 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 much want that so i'm gonna ask you this and then i'm gonna shut the fuck up have you always been like that no so here's the deal here's the deal i have one word for you wayne here it is 
laughter. If you are not laughing with the person that you are with on a daily basis, and I mean daily basis, you're not with the right person. End of story. And that is not only my opinion. I firmly fucking believe that. Yeah, the, thing that my, the thing that my wife and I, from, from the word go, have been able to do, and I'm talking about the first time we sat down at a dinner table together at a restaurant, we started laughing before we said anything to each other. We just started laughing. That is a fact. We have been, be, been able to, through all the crap that we have been through in our marriage over the last 12 years, we've been able to laugh on a daily basis. End of story. If your bad times... Like, you guys still argue. We'll disagree on things. Let's just put it that way. But here's here's the thing. If your harder times are outweighing your laughter with each other, I believe there's an issue. See, I've been in relationships, I've been in quite a few, where it was more drama and more in my head, so to speak, than... The laughter and the fun. I'm not saying every moment's fucking fun. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is you learn to laugh at yourself, right? We learn to laugh with each other, not at each other, but with each other. Okay? So we don't take things too seriously. I mean, I could tell you stories and I'm not. Okay, you know what? I will. So my wife was diagnosed with cancer about uh, 10 years ago, something like that, 10 years ago. And there were two, there were two outcomes to this. One, had they not come up with the drug that they had pretty much just come up with, she'd have been gone years ago. She'd have been, she'd have been gone years ago. We found out that she had to have massive surgery, right? They had to remove a tumor from her duodenum, which is in your stomach. It's like the, an opening in your stomach. There were two outcomes to this situation. And she had to be, oh, by the way, and she had to be on chemo for quite a while to shrink the tumor before they could even touch it. So that was devastating news. And the surgery end of it, there were two outcomes. Either it was going to come out clean with, uh, with no sprinkles of cancer falling out into the rest of the body, this tumor, or she was going to have to have a Whipple, which is a tube that comes out of your side and you, you, you go to the bathroom in a bag. And that would have to be there for who, God knows how long. Now, when we found out that she had cancer is when I asked her to marry me. So we found out she had cancer. And a little while later, I asked her to marry me. And she was kind of confused as to why I would ask someone who just got diagnosed with cancer if I would marry them. I said, because I, and, and I said, basically, I don't, want to not be with you ever and we but we always knew this right so my the point of my story i guess is that and we're still still dealing with this by the way this isn't and this isn't a secret i mean people know about you know so we're still mm -hmm. you know she's she still has to get uh, she still has to get scans every uh, three to six months. Uh, she still has to deal with uh, medication and stuff. And so this has just been going on forever. But we've been able to. This was my point, and I'm sorry, I, I'm rambling, but 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 I'm not. I'm telling a story. The morning of her surgery, we had to be at UCLA. We're driving. It's about four in the morning, if I my memory serves me. Four four in the morning. We figure we're gonna fly to the hospital, right? Well, there's a massive accident and we're stuck on the 405 and we're late to her surgery, which is a big no-no. So at first we're parked. There's no cars moving. And the 405, I don't know if you know this out in LA, is like this big parking lot. It can be really bad when there's traffic. So we just kind of looked at each other, turned the car off, sitting there on the 405, started laughing. Now she's got one of the biggest surgeries she'll ever have in her life, ever, coming up. And we just look at each other, we start laughing. And then we started making out. And I got to tell you, there's something there, man. That's fucking amazing. When I look back on that, I go, yeah, that's why. That's why. That's why we're still together. That's why we'll most likely always be together until one of us corks off. Then it'll probably be me before her. 
Hopefully. I don't want to I don't I don't want the other way around. Yeah, neither I I'm, I'm the same when it comes to that yeah. stuff. I want So, be, anyway, that's a long uh, answer to your your question. No, it's not. It's Left not at all. Did you know it. did you know right away? Well, yes, and I did. And we both did because she said on our first date, and we sat down, we just started laughing, looking at each other, laughing. She said, in her mind, she said, there you are. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. So to all yeah. the ladies out there, <laughs> I'm spoken for. And I know that's upsetting, and I get it. I get it. I get, I've been in there's your a shoes. Lot of, there's a lot of people, there, there are a lot of women that just... Um, find me repulsive. Their hearts hit the floor when they when they when they just heard that they said fuck this was my chance yeah, Alex and Kennedy. I'm sorry uh, I I don't feel like I should have to apologize but I will you shouldn't have to apologize no. I know I'm so I'm so caught up in in my head when it comes to relationships and I'm really trying to work through that shit but it does it it, it fucking weighs on me man like you have no idea weighs on it's my biggest it's my biggest thing it's my biggest hang up in life is that is, is letting somebody in and just being cool with it, you know? So Talk. why, but you know, be, you know, you can see the thing is, is that you're going to go into your past with in your, in your head, right? So you're going to go into past relationships. You're going to look at, you know, you said you have abandonment issues and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But the truth is this is I've now. always been like this. Yeah. But yeah, but I've deal. always been like that. Yeah. But when you say that, when you say I've always been like this, you put that out there in the universe and you're and you're living it. So if you change that narrative, right? Instead of saying I've always been like this, you can say I'm not like that anymore. I mean, you can literally say it. I'm not like that anymore. I'm not like that anymore. So laughter, I'm telling you right now, man, it's 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 a lot better to laugh than to cry. Right. Although we cry, right? We all cry. We all have moments where we feel like we shit need to. or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Or we cry. We can do happy crying too. I've cried. I've cried hard being so happy about something news I got or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's all a release. Crying is just a release, right? Either energy, good or bad. When my daughter was born, I cried nine times. There you go. And uh, through the through through the delivery, and I looked over, and the midwife had her camera on her phone pointing at me. And I said, why, why, why are you, why are you filming me? And she goes, cause this is fucking hilarious. I've never uh. seen somebody cry so much out of a baby and I'm sending it to all the midwives. And I was like, you son of a mm. good tears. Yeah. Yeah. Tears, I believe man. that we should. Yeah. Yeah. I've had some good tears. I've had some bad tears. I've had some ugly crying. I've mm -hmm. cried ugly. I've yep. cried ugly recently. I don't give a fuck. Um, yeah, no, I just wanted to know because you are, you, you, you know, like you, you do, I, I talked to your, I talked to, to Maureen yesterday, mm -hmm. um, because she was really impressed with my velour tracksuit. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, but she said that <laughs> anyway, she said that she said, I'm like, how's, how's being back in Texas? And I was thinking about her and all the shit that's going on. And I know you guys are huge advocates for human rights and you guys are huge advocates for humanity. And so I, I knew that going back to Texas was going to be maybe a bit of a trigger or it was going to be hard for her in some ways. So, um, I asked, I said, how's Texas? And, and she answered, she says, it's good. I just miss Alex, you know? And, and, yeah. and I, I felt it. And I, I did say, I said, I love knowing you guys. I love knowing yeah. you guys because, because it's, it's, there's a reason all of this happens and there's a reason why people meet. And I think a big part of it is, is this is like, I'm going through some new stuff with a relationship and, and I'm trying to make it work and it's working. Yeah. It's good. working. It's, fucking it's great. been a little bit of a shit. It's been a little bit of a shit storm, you know, with her catering to me and my mental health when I was going through my panic stuff about it. And then she's just spent the last week, you know, with strep throat mm -hmm. because you can, still get colds and the flu and strep throat during a pandemic without it having does COVID. not have to yeah. without having covid what no but anyways um you guys are you guys are teaching me and i really kind of appreciated hearing her say, uh, say that yesterday then she sent me a picture of your chickens yes we and well they're rogue chickens but yes they are in our yard most of the time yeah it's pretty it's pretty awesome so i wanted to say something you just said 
You just said this. You said catering to you. She's been catering to you, right? You said that. Yeah. Here's my thing. As long as you cater back to her, everything will be great. There, There is a yep. 50-50 thing, right? It's like my wife does things for me and I do things for her. So it's just, it's kind of like sex. Good sex is reciprocal, right? So there's two people, they come together and they both want to make each other feel really fucking good, okay? Mm-hmm. And it's not one side gets it and the other side doesn't or vice versa it's two people and but that's sec- but that's just the dance of life that's in any relationship you you don't have to be romantically involved if you're in a friendship and you feel like the other person because i've been here if you're in a friendship and you feel like you're given more in this friendship than the other person is you fuck well at least for me i just fucking end it i'll just be like oh, i'm not gonna fucking talk to this person anymore fuck these people if they're not fucking if they're not giving me what i want and I'm giving them what I what they seem like they're wanting or whatever in a friendship because friendships are intimate too, right? Friendships are intimate. So it's like, you know, it's the same dance. It's 50-50. If you feel like you're being fun, it's okay. The person that you text, right? Say you text somebody and you consider them a friend and they never text you back. And then the first time you don't get text back, you go, all right, I'll send one more. And you send it. And they still don't fucking respond. There's a problem. You should not be friends with that fucking person. And this has happened to me recently. Recently. I thought I was becoming friends with this person. I'm not going to name any names. And I'm literally not going to name any names. I thought I was becoming friends with this person. And, uh, you know, it just didn't go that way. I'll just leave it at that. It just didn't go that way. So it's like, you know, fuck it, man. Yeah, but so this is where grace comes in, too. Like, if you're becoming friends with somebody. Mm-hmm. And I, and that was like us at the beginning. Like, we would shoot the shit a bit. And it was still like you, you're trying to figure it out and feel it out. And then all of a sudden, you know, like you that you have that moment in the friendship world where where you're like, holy fuck, I'm like this person. Or yes, this but person you I just said remember. we were shooting the shit. Not we I was shooting the shit. shit with no one. No. Or you were no, shooting the no, shit. No, with no, yeah, yeah, we yeah. were shooting well, the I shit. Well, I, I say this, man. I say, and, and I'm trying to live by this advice, um, and it's hard, but I'm, I'm getting there. And I say that we stand in the mirror. And when you when you go through a breakup or when you go through the loss of a breakup with a romantic person or a, or a friend or whatever, mm-hmm. um, you stand in the mirror and you go, I don't get it. I'm fucking, I don't get it. Why? Why can't I deserve this from somebody? I deserve this from somebody. I deserve this from somebody, you know, and, and we focus on what other people are doing for us. If we stop, we say those same things in the mirror. We put ourselves on that pedestal, but we say, I deserve to do this for somebody. And I deserve to do this for somebody. If we stop and worry about what we're doing for other people, instead of what they are doing for us, and it's working on both sides, Mm -hmm. Then you're not you're never going to and that's what you and your wife have is that mm-hmm. you guys think about what you're doing for the other person, not what the other person is doing for you. And that's mm-hmm. where my mindset I'm trying to switch is to where I'm worrying about what I'm doing for her and 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 it's hard and I'm getting there. It's new to me too, right? Mm-hmm. Like my it's very, very new to me. But yeah. I get it. Okay. That's fair. Give and take, uh, man. Give fair. and take. And and, Give and, and take. the other thing. And is- what the fuck do you mean you're trying to make but you don't have time for new friends? I, I know I I don't like anybody else um except for you and maybe like two other people or three What the fuck man I know I get it I I get it like I was upset the other day when you said that you you said oh I have this great buddy and I went what the fuck does that mean <laughs> Like I didn't know how to I didn't know how to feel about that I was like I know Does that I know Okay did we just break up I felt I felt bad yesterday when I was like I can't podcast. I felt like I just let you down so hard. And I was like, you know, at first I was like, oh, that no, no, that's great. Look, your daughter. You sent me the picture of you and your daughter. I was like, oh, that's so cute. Of course, go spend time with your daughter. And then about five minutes later, I went, the fuck is he thinking? Like, why would he spend time with his daughter rather than podcast with me? And again, this leads me into this: you can't be greedy in a relationship. If you're greedy in a relationship then it's going to be over. You're going to grow resentment. And I, I do need you to know, however, that, um, that, that 
that I've actually outed all of. I have no more friends. Just, I'm. I gotta you, say, I'm happy about. I wrote that. them all. I wrote them all a letter. I wrote them a letter. <laughs> I wrote them a letter, and I said, "Listen, um, it's Alex now, <laughs> and and I get that you've been there for 25, 30 years of my life, but yeah, you're not Alex. Yeah, and, and the smart ones will understand. Yeah, and they're like, "You mean Alex Scooby?" And I was like, "Yeah." And I haven't heard from them since, so they get it. Some someone said it. someone said the other day. They go, "Wow, he pronounces your last name real Canadian," and and I I, I never even thought about it. And when they commented, I can't remember if it was on Instagram or TikTok, and I, I started laughing. I went and I played it back again, and it's actually really cute the way you say my last name. How how do you say your last name? Well, you're saying it right. It's just, but you take that U and you kind of like put a real real pronunciation on the U. You say Scooby, which is hilarious Scooby. to me. Scooby, <laughs> Scooby. Yeah, you say Scooby. You pronounce yeah. the U like you. You say Scooby, which is awesome. Scooby. Yeah, it's hilarious. It, it should be. It should be. It's hilarious. You know what? I I, I I love how my one buddy with the most fucked up last name in the world, and he listens to all of our podcasts. Yeah. It's not a fucked up last name, but it's a last name that Siri should not be able to pronounce. It's it's Heidinga. Say that again. And out of Heidinga. Heidinga. Huh. I believe it's Dutch. Heidinga. I believe it's a Dutch. Heidinga. What's his first name? Steve. Hello, Steve. Heidinga. Right? Uh, Siri. I'm like, hey, eh, call. And and she'll be like, calling Steve Heidinga. And I'm like, you whoa. can't even say my fucking last name right. Whoa. You can't say anybody's last name right, but you say Heidinga perfectly. Whoa. That's amazing, mm -hmm. man. And it's kind of scary. Mm -hmm. You know, technology mm -hmm. scares me. I think I'm going to drink tonight. So here's something interesting. If you go on, if you go to Amazon, if you have one of those Alexa things, did I say that too loud? I don't want her to start talking. Yeah, see, I can't Alexa say things, Siri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know. And one of our friend's name is Alexa. So when, when they're here, we're like, don't say, don't use your name. So, but anyway, if you have Alexa thing and you say, Alexa, play the more you know with Alex Scooby and Wayne Hanna. Do you it know that? It does? Yeah, we're on there, man. Can I try this real well, quick? Well, it's, it's Amazon. It's on Amazon. No, I know, but this is... So I have Apple Home. I have okay. the Apple version of... Which is, by the way, yeah. um, I know you're not an Apple guy, but I will give it to them with these Home Pods that has seven Sono speakers in it. They oh. work... Uh, I have one upstairs, one down. You can meld them together. Oh, the wow. best sound ever. Hang on. Let's see Let's see if I can make it happen. Okay. Hey, Siri, play The More You Know with Alex Scooby and Wayne Hanna. How did we find that on Apple? Wait, oh, but what? it's Apple Podcast. But hey, iTunes? Siri, what? play the podcast, The More You Know, with Alex Scooby and Wayne Hanna. I didn't find that on Apple Podcast. Tyler, damn it! Fuck you, Tyler. Fuck you, Tyler. Fuck you, Tyler. What are we paying him for? I mean, Nothing. He... We're not paying him anything. That's true, we're not. Sorry, Tyler. We're not. That's Maybe cute. one day. However, no. however, I'm paying him back. What, in handies? He, he, no, he came, no. No, he, no, um, I can't even picture me giving Tyler a handy. Like, you know, I the... can, which is weird. And then we never talked again. Um, <laughs> you would be so jealous if I gave another man a handy. I'd be fucking, I, I, we, first all, I will we... never, I can promise you that I will never give you a handy. Uh, I don't want you to, first of all, second of all, never say never. Cause one night bottle of tequila and like fucking four joints and all of a sudden we wake up going i can't believe that happened and i'm disgusted let's try it again <laughs> with two half-eaten burritos <laughs> hey have you seen this oh is that a deckle fuck you wayne no alex fuck you i have i have Listen, I, I said something to you a month and a half ago, uh -huh. and you showed me how much it bothered you, so I stopped saying that word when it came to hamburgers. I remember what that was about. The least, the least, the, the least you could do, Mr. Scooby, <laughs> is 
is just change for me the one thing. Well, here's I'm not the thing. asking you to. I'm I would not do asking that. you to. Okay. Do, oh, but no. But here's the deal: if I'm anywhere in my country, and I walk up to someone and go, "Hey, do you see my Jeep? You see all those? See all those decals on there?" They'd go, mm-hmm. "The fuck did you just say?" And I don't I'd go, think they would. I'd say, "Well, De- they're they're decals." It's not a. And they'd be like, "What does that even mean?" I'm I'm not even kidding. That word does it's not. It's not an American thing. It's an East Coast thing. It's an East Coast Doesn't thing. I'm the, from Jersey, and yeah, it, I, no, no one ever said decal. Jersey. You, oh my God. No one ever. I said just that. said that. I know they say decal on the East Coast of Canada and the United States. They call it a decal, and they're right. It's the re- no, they're not. The rest <laughs> of the fucking the rest of North America, <laughs> the rest of North America calls it a decal. Let's talk to our let's let's just let's put this out there because I want to hear back from our listeners. I want to know: Do you say decal or do you say decal? I'm fucking looking for. I'm looking for the smartest person I know right now. Who Google? I'm calling the. I'm. What the fuck does Google know? Well, I'm going to say something right now. I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm going to go call, on my I'm, phone, I'm, I'm, I don't and I'm going to I'm going to say. Uh, I'm looking for this. So I don't. I'm realizing going through this that I don't have like super smart friends. I'm going to do this. Uh, here we go. Pronounce. Pronounce. D e c a l. Here we go. You ready? Let's see. Let's see what she says. How do you go about saying it? Decal. You do want to stress on the first syllable, on the D syllable. Decal. Pretty straightforward once you know. Decal. And now you know. Let your trigger go off, because here we are. This is just the... Yeah. So why is that go. so con? Why is it so condescending? Because why it's does saying it have to be it's so fucking condescend- common sense that it's just <laughs> oh. the, the, the pronunciation is it, on the D. The guys like D-cal. the guys like this. The guys like this. It's pretty much self-explanatory. You <laughs> fucking moron. <laughs> it's true. It is it's true. D-cal. I don't so care what cool. country I was in. If no. I was in a play a and fuck. the and there was this a word D E C A L, it doesn't this, matter what country I'm in. I'd say decal. This needs to be edited the fuck out. No, and this needs to stay in. Out. Tyler, don't you dare you know. edit this out because I just gave... Tyler, if you don't edit this out... No, he's keeping this, this in. Tyler, Tyler, Mm-mm. up there Mm-mm. in the booth, keep this in because I just proved it. And now we're happier. Now we're all happier. Now we're all happier. Oh, don't I'm shut sorry. down, Wayne. Don't shut down. Don't shut down. You know, use your breathing. You know, observe your breath. Yeah, observe your breath. Let it. There's no way I'm wrong on that. You just well, fucking heard it. Yeah, but I'm dedicated. I've dedicated a big portion of my life to to to. Why are you wearing your shirt off of your shoulders like it's a fucking shawl? Hmm. My name is Alex Scooby. I am 48 <laughs> years old. <laughs> and I like Manasquan, New Jersey. Oh, you said that right. I, I enjoy mm, mussels, <laughs> my own, and the seafood dish mm, in a mm, white wine reduction. Mm, uh, mm, and why are why are you mm, wearing it off? I just I feel like you are you're like you know what mm, when Marina's away. <laughs> I love it. <laughs>